for those uh, of you who have been here before, we're going to rehash some of the stuff. Basically, you are aware of the project. It's all to bid soon. Um, February 21st is when the bids are supposed to be left through MDOT. MDOT is going to be in control of all the bidding and all the contractors and all the work. Uh, that'll be coming up soon. We posted some things up here on the walls related to the uh, utilities and the consumer's energy work and stuff like that that's been going on. That part on the left side there is the work that's now done from Drainer up to Burger Street. Um, that was <coughs> quite a, a mess down there, as you recall, back in a month or so ago. Consumers, part of their contractual obligations is they have to lay off a certain amount of workers for this time frame, so they're off now, and they'll be back March 2nd. They'll start at like E Street up to the north end of the village where the project ends. And that's a smaller map over here you'll see from E Street up into the peak line there, which is the project official boundaries near Harriet. Um, so they'll be back to do the gas line relocation work and stuff there on Davidson Street and uh, around the fire department. There's a few locations on there that they will be continuing to do that work. So lane closures will come up again uh, through that section um, for the consumer's energy work. I think all the DTE poles and stuff work is for the most part done. There may be one more pole out there that has to be moved. AT&T did the work at East Street where they were, oh, there was a uh, large barricades, and <coughs> barricades in place for about a month, maybe more, for replacing the bolt that's right in the traffic lane. There's another one taking place right now at Stanton and M24 by the movie theaters in the bank. MDOT and uh, AT&T are meeting in here tomorrow to get a progress report on that, hopefully. That will wrap it up in the next couple weeks. Um, those are the ones that you see the concrete barriers for because they're actually working in the traffic lane. So for safety reasons, MDOT requires those barricades, so that's why they stay permanently. Whereas the consumer's energy, they were able to pull those off for the weekend or pull them off for a day or two when they weren't going to be there. Same thing will happen when the consumer does the work on the north end. The barrels out in the lane because they're working in the adjacent right away, but not usually right in the lane itself. Um, so that work will take up again here in a few weeks. Um, not nearly as much work uh, left over on this north end, so hopefully that won't be a couple weeks and be done. Um, ATT, that is the final ATT vault replacement project, the one there at Stanton in 24. So when that was done, that should be all the ATT work like that. So once the contractor is chosen, um, is chosen like I said, uh, 221 is the final <coughs> bid, and the selection will be made by a dot. They won't know who the contractor is until they come down and choose one, and then they won't know the exact starting date or the plan of attack until the contractor proposes that to them. That <coughs> then will review that and say, are they going to start in the north, the south end, or both ends, or where are they going to start and stop? It's up to them. They have to propose that plan to MDOT. As long as MDOT's okay with it, then that's up to the contractor then to go forth. Um, the, the, most, the work we're talking to and addressing here is work within the village limits. So basically it's from Minnetonka down by Marketplace Mall north. Some folks have come here where they have questions and concerns down south of Drain, <coughs> down in Orient Township and uh, Lake Orient Village. We don't have information about that other than we know what's happening. We know that's a, a surface mill and refill. There's some intersection work down in Indian Wood that can be redone. But again, that's not our focus because that's not our community for lack of better terms. We have to focus on and get the good details of what's here. Those communities should have all the information for any uh, work or plans or questions that you need to answer at those, at those communities. Um, we can answer any questions you might have, but we may not have a lot of information or questions on those items. Um, it will be in stages. The first stage that's going to happen, you'll see the Drainer Road intersection, the east half, will be closed down because uh, I, is anyone else aware of the, the large detour that's going to happen during the construction? Yeah, that's a large map is over here. That's been out for a while. I think it was last fall. First thing they have to do is redo the intersection for the northbound lanes, turning east or right-hand turns onto Drayton. That will be closed off. They'll work on the <coughs> eastern half of the intersection. While that's closed off, there's detour maps here explaining where they're going to go um, at that point. Because you won't be able to go eastbound on Drainer, they'll be directed up to Broadway and around back to where to get the industrial park or your homes or Oxford Lake subdivision entrance. You won't be able to turn right on Drainer, and that should be, we're guessing around three weeks, three to four weeks range, that that will be closed down. And so you'll have to be detour up around to get to this location over here, whether you're out east on Drainer or farther, anywhere over here. That will be the first phase that will be affecting everybody. Once that's done, and they flip over to the west side, that's when the southbound only 
phase kicks in. The detour then the route, this official detour route map that's been out, that will be happening then. Anything uh, northbound will be directed at Drainer East and up the detour route. Uh, and then from uh, southbound will be uh, only southbound only through that area. So once that's completed, then they move into the work actually becoming uh, through the M24 corridor. Again, we don't know if they're going to start uh, at Drainer Road and start doing the removal of the pavement and stuff, or if they're going to start on the north end or both. We don't know. That's up to the contractor to choose. The east side is obviously the first side they're doing, the northbound lanes. That's where most of the utility work is. There's a large diameter of <coughs> drain that's being placed by MDOT down the middle. So probably about 60% of that road eastbound will be taken up in the first phase. Most of the work a lot of it will be done in that. Once that's completed, sometime this summer, then they'll flip the traffic over to the new pavement and then the southbound traffic will be on that side and then they'll work on the west half of the street. Uh, again, we don't know the phasing, we don't know the timetables or anything like that until such is presented to MDOT and they approve it. There'll be weekly meetings to MDOT uh, to keep us abreast of things like that. Um, MDOT plans on having a office right downtown here. There's a couple <coughs> options that they're looking at. Some storefronts that they're either going to lease out or perhaps a job trader at a vacant location, but they want to have a presence right down in here in the downtown area because of all the amount of work that the, that's going to happen here. The removal of the sidewalks, sending right back to the building fronts, all the new streetscapes. Glenn's going to talk a little bit more about that as the how we are piggybacking on top of this MDOT project to do the street uh, scape enhancements and everything to work in town and actually full length of the village will be some uh, improvements and I'm glad we can talk about that a little later. Um, what else like that? Vibration monitoring. There are sections along M24, the main corridor downtown, the four blocks, and then a little bit south to Mechanic, and then a little bit north on one side to... Yeah. Um, Davidson Street on the west side up there. This area is the area that MDOT and uh, SHPO perhaps is concerned with the historical structures and the construction work and the compaction and all the heavy work affecting the foundations and the building structures and things like that. Besides. Part of the project is to the contractor, MDOT's contractor, will either do it themselves or more than likely hire it out to a company to come out and uh, videotape people's buildings and basements and things like that. So as the project proceeds, there's a good documentation and record of the status of the buildings, the shape of the buildings before they came, and then if there's any damages assessment later on, there's a process and that has to uh, deal with those and to how to make claims and things like that. Uh, I know Nicole has reached out to David Harrison, who's the project manager from MDOT, and provided him some information. I think I have maybe forums or not yet, but... Yes, yeah, so I have all the forums, and then I have, you know, the specifics about what the vibration monitoring is, and confirmed all the addresses with him. Okay, so you see the addresses listed up there. They're all Washington Street and 24 addresses, even though it does show you're going out to mechanic a little bit. It's really more so that the buildings here. Oh, it, no, it's not on Mechanic Street. Right, so even though this shaded area kind of appears it might be, if you're on like one of these first buildings, the mechanic it's not. Yeah. Right, so it's just broad shading like that. Um, I think I did it by parcels. Yeah. You know, the dots of the parcels. What do you mean for that? Um, before I get into your stuff, let me reiterate. Does anyone have any questions on the overall general scope project? On the, on the general scope? Yeah. No, I was, well, you already answered the question that Orion is responsible for Orion. So I'm going to ask the question anyhow. Yeah. Is that going to start at the same time down there? Is this that drain road? Nobody knows. Nobody knows? Mm -hmm. Until they propose, that's all part of the same contract. The contractor doing that work will be doing the contract, uh, contract work up here. So until they are chosen as a contractor, I would assume that they have a plan already in their bid. So once they accept the bid, that MDOT will have an idea of their plan of attack. Uh, so we don't know until MDOT finds out and, and makes the rest of us aware. MDOT is planning a public town hall meeting, something like this, March 25th, is it been? At Oxford High School. That's tentative, I don't think it's been 100% nailed down. Less than, right, so but that's what they're shooting for. Um, the schools have, I think, said that they're open to that idea. I don't know if it's, mm -hmm. they haven't checked their schedules for conflicts yet, but the school has been made aware of that date for March 25th at Oxford High School. It's high school. Um, again, that's all we know in that so far. We don't know if it's in the auditorium, the gymnasium. We don't know the time. All we know right now is a tentative date for MDOT to come out and 
from the vibration test, and they just film it yeah. on the, from the exterior. And in the basement, I believe, and in the, the basement, too. Mm -hmm. What about the buildings you can't get into the basement? Uh, I don't know. This is what they have written up in the paperwork from MDOT. I'm um, going to place, maybe, or... He's going to attempt to get into all of these structures and videotape whether it's the building owner or the business owner. Their intent is to document the foundation, the foundation wall, the basement floor, all of that. Uh, we also recommend that the business owner do it as well, or the property owner do it as well. And they will be installing vibration monitors throughout the environment. And once it hits a threshold, they reduce the vibrations. And if it gets to a higher threshold than that, they will actually stop work to identify what's causing the excess vibrations. And so it's, it's going to be a series of monitors that are in the soil to pick that up. But the intent is, is to document the existing state and then prevent it from reaching a point where it might damage those historic structures. I was just talking about some of the buildings where there is no access to the foundation from below. Mm -hmm. There's a few buildings you can't get in below. If you don't have a basement, they're going to exterior foundation. And well, they might have a basement, you just can't get into it because they might be covered up. I see a couple of buildings with no access to them. <coughs> Not sure how they'll have to handle that. Yeah. I'm sure it's probably not the first the whole town that has gone through that they've had to come up. So I'm sure they've dealt with it and probably get a plan. The school group and I, I don't know. Um, Nicole is going to talk about some uh, communication stuff and events and things that the DDA and the village is doing, the multi DDA. Yes, ma'am. Just a question. I had um, mentioned at a meeting before, and it seems like the dates are moving back a little bit. It I'm surprised to see a bid out going in, in February for a job this big. Are they still predicting to be completed by November of this year? Yes. The, the, the bid documents have been out, the bid's been out since okay. January. This Friday they're awarding the bid. So that's not unusual? It's a little compressed, but that's been their mode of operation lately on larger projects because they have a limited scope of companies that are going to bid and they process. So. You know, it is a little tight, but, but technically the, the project was, was, was slated to start on April 15th because that's when Frost Falls lived. Okay. And so, you know, we've been working under the assumption that as soon as Frost Falls lift, they would be work, going out and working on that. But with other projects in the area being behind the schedule, they've been working on those projects <coughs> rather than getting mobilized for this project, so it still should be done in one season. Yeah, the middle of April to the middle of November, I think was the original plan. That's the that's official date. And that's still what the plan is. It's, per, it's possible that they could get a week or two early if they want to, but again, they may be finishing their projects from last year that they might have equipment and personnel on, they might have a small presence for the um, And before they do get going, the detour route, uh, going on drainer, up Glassby all the way up to Ray Road, is going to get a, a surface treatment and uh, mill and fill areas, and, uh, skip patching they call it, to that whole area prior to the uh, detour being turned over to the traffic. And then after the project, it's supposed to be a resurface from that as well for that whole detour route. So anybody lives in the road, Concerned about the damage to the road is going to be addressed. Um, I'll turn it over to the coach to talk about some of the events and portions. Sure. So even though there's going to be construction, we want to make sure that you know we still have uh, regular events as well as community promotions. DDA is one of the main functions for them is to promote our downtown and our community. Uh, so we do have. We can move it to the next one. Uh, we do have a full calendar of events. Uh, we will be having uh, the music in the parks this summer. It will be um, here actually at the village offices out front. So we have those dates listed. Um, working with the um, museum, there will be a historic downtown stroll. Um, some stories about some of the different buildings in the community. They're looking to make that into a you know multi-year project. Um, you know, maybe 10, 10 buildings this year and 10 buildings next year. Uh, we have a summer solstice soiree, 1920s theme, as well as 
uh, some town hall meetings, and some other things uh, scheduled along with our regular Scarecrow Festival, which is Night Out, Small Business Saturday, and Soup and Soup Stroll. So lots of fun events. And then we have a couple of special promotions that are happening. Um, For a week, she'll rotate around the community um, because there is no place like Oxford. So, if you grab a picture with Dorothy, I'll post it on social media, tag downtown Oxford in the business that you're in, you can enter weekly for a $20 drawing. Um, so, that's an, an easy way. You're downtown, we'll reward you for being downtown. And then the other promotion that we have is Shop Oxford. And for people that are downtown that are shopping, you can turn your uh, receipts in. Uh, for every $10 you spend in the Village of Oxford at our downtown businesses, uh, you can turn those tickets in for a, um, a, or excuse me, turn your receipts in for a ticket, and then be entered into a monthly drawing for $250, and then at the end of the construction season, November, we'll actually have a grand prize drawing of $1,000. So those are some of the promotions that we have going on. We also want to make sure that we help people to get to the businesses downtown. So you'll see along the detour route, it'll be a six to eight foot sign um, with businesses listed. Um, so for, for this example here, if you want to get to the chiropractor or um, homegrown brewery, the sign would be at the corner of Glassby and E Street, just directing you to, you know, this is the easiest route to get to these businesses. So you'll see some of those going up in the area. And that's your line. As we've said numerous times before, this is just us picking back on an MDOT project. They were going to tear the road up anyway. So we decided to say, all right, let's take advantage of this. Let's update our streetscape to 21st century standards. And so when we're looking at the design for this, and we've been working on this for several years now, we're looking at pedestrian safety, improving pedestrian crossings, uh, looking at noise abatement in downtown. So through a combination of federal funding, MDOT funding, and Village of DDA funding, we're putting together a $2.1 million, $2 million streetscape that we're doing without incurring any long-term debt. We're not having to bond this project a lot of the communities with. Uh, one of the things you see here, this is a mid-block crossing running from basically the Ox to the alleyway between Cape Ann Pit and Lord's Pet Paradise. We have two others of these in the downtown, so you no longer have to go out to Burdick Street to cross the street in downtown. Hopefully this will cut down on the people who scurry across in front of traffic throughout the year. We're putting singing in downtown, we're putting in new street trees. One of, the, one of the interesting things we're doing here is where you see all of these trees. If you notice, you look out there, there's trees in downtown Oxford that have been there for 20 years and haven't really grown. And that's because of the soil conditions underneath the sidewalk. One of the things we're doing with this is we've got an engineered soil going in underneath the sidewalks so that these trees will actually have a good growing environment and should be a good high performing tree as it goes through. And we're using these same types of trees throughout the entire 1.1 corridor from village border to village border. The same with the lamp fixtures. We're putting in street lights from border to border in the village. And so it's going to give a more uniform feel and hopefully get people to, to move throughout the entire shopping district rather than just lurk in downtown or lurk at the south end. So um, here's an aerial view of what that crossing will look like in front in the mid-block crossing. There's going to be a crossing just like this at Stanton, Denison, and M24, so people can cross at the theater. And then there's going to be one at the north end, just south of East Street. And you can see what this looks like. Uh, we're going to an elevated view here. Oh, this is the other side of the street. So it just gives you an idea that we're putting in these pedestrian refuges, we're putting the crosswalk signage, and we're putting pylons in the middle of the lanes on the, on the lane marker. This is all done to slow traffic speeds down. 
so that through the engineering and design here, we can get speeds from 35 down to 30, maybe even down to 28 through downtown. That's our goal. Um, you know, we always like to have a little bit of fun with this because this is going to be a huge project, and you know it's got a lot of people scared. But occasionally, we like to have a little bit of levity with this, and so we've recruited the Beatles to do some promotional work for us, and, and possibly even a concert this summer. Another group the news, keep going. Okay, I'll And so here's a view, an oblique view from downtown, from the north end of downtown. And so you can see we're going to have a street crossing every two to four hundred feet on Main Street rather than having to detour all the way to Purdue. Mm -hmm. And so that's going to really improve pedestrian connectivity in downtown. And once we do this, we can start to get better pedestrian counts in our downtown. And that'll give us more ammunition for adding additional pedestrian crossings throughout the corridor. So, anything else? Oh, working in slide. We can turn the lights back on. If anybody has questions, we can take questions for about the next 25 minutes. Yes, hello. Hi, another question about Oxford Marketplace, you guys. Could you, is Oxford Marketplace businesses, are those included in that $250 shopping thing? Yes. Yes, okay, yeah. so I've any village business week. Any business within the village. Okay, so it's not, they don't have to do anything to sign up for like the. Okay. So you do have to let us know that they're interested in having Dorothy at the business. I visited 40 <coughs> businesses last week and dropped off packets um, to the marketplace, White House Market, uh, with information about how to sign up for the um, street signs as well as how to participate in the um, promotions. So they, the, all of the businesses in the marketplace already have that information. Appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. One of the things we didn't touch on on our, uh, as a website, we're trying to put all the information on uh, restoring24.com. Right, there's a couple of mm -hmm. variations of it. Yes. Um, so the maps, the detours, the contest, we're trying to get that all located in one spot. Um, so it's simple, easy to remember. You don't have to remember, try to go to the PDA site or the billing site, things like that. So restoring24.com. We'll get you all the information. You can go on there and sign up for uh, to, to get emails and stuff. To get emails, you can also, if you have any specific questions, we actually had a question first thing this morning. Um, so you can sign up, or you can submit direct questions about any of the project, and either Glenn or I answer those questions. There's going to be a fair amount of motion outreach. The paper um, Glenn has talked about. Uh, Comcast is or a charter? I'm not sure. We're looking at maybe some television way. advertising on cable. We're looking at YouTube. We're looking at our social media channels. We're, we're looking at every possible media channel we can use that's effective. We want to keep people abreast of the changes that might come, but as well as remind them that the businesses down there still are there, and they're still open, and they're still welcome to have you come visit them. Um, it may be a little more challenging, but for the most part, Burton Street will be open the whole time, with the exception of when they're doing the sewer main and the storm sewer main, storm sewer main right uh, in the intersection, they will have to close that. But any time they close the intersection of a street on M24, the next, the north and south ones must remain open. They can't have two streets, three streets closed in a row. So if you're coming out on Crawford or whatever, and they might have Lincoln closed or vice versa, but you can't have two or three in a row. So if they're, as they work and if they have to work right in front of an intersection or um, a large one like that, the other ones north and south need to remain open. So we're trying to make uh, all accesses to all businesses at least have some kind of an access. Luckily, a lot of businesses in the corridor down there have the rear entrances, but not all. <coughs> and so for those on the south end, even they, as they block a driveway off, it'll be very temporary to get the work done and open it right back up. You may have seen uh, on the streetscape things that we get, we get questions about the downtown parking. There still will be downtown parking on, on Long M24 there. Uh, are we gaining a couple spots or losing a couple spots? It's we're pretty gaining, close. We're gaining three spots. Gaining three spots in the downtown. And it'll be a little bit wider, right, because the lanes are narrower um, or something like that. This is his belly. I'm stepping in his area. <laughs> the, parking, the parking space dimensions right now as they exist downtown range from seven feet to 11 feet wide, and so they're going to standardize it as part of changing the road geometry, so the parking spaces will be all one size, which is in some areas allowed us to gain some road width to add to the sidewalks. 
sidewalks are going to increase up to 13 feet wide to 19 feet wide, depending on where you're at in the downtown. So it's going to give us more buffering from the traffic lanes. In, in south of the village, the Oxford Township is working on a paved path sidewalk from the drainer up to the village limits too. So if there is anything there now, you will be able to walk all the way down through there to drainer road. So that's something that they're doing on their end, south of Manitoba. <coughs> But you'll notice right when you get into there's going to be new signings coming in the village from the north and the south. Uh, welcoming in the village. So there's going to be the street lights, like Glenn said, all the way from the village end to the village end, lining the streets. Uh, try to give it a little more. That it's not just the core downtown of the village and the shopping area and everything is wider. <coughs> so, um, but you know, what we ask is we're, we're sometimes getting information. As it gets through the channels to us, sometimes we have a time to get it out there and share it. Sometimes it's kind of late, like we learned with consumers' energy. The utilities, I think, are kind of unique. They're used to just do whatever they want, whenever they want, and everything else delays, uh, catches up, I guess. Um, MDOT, I think, is going to be much better at keeping us abreast of that information and having us, giving us time to share it and get it out there. Once we get into the actual project, there will be weekly construction update meetings. And what they will focus on in those meetings is what they accomplished in the previous week and then looking at the work schedule for the two weeks forward. So we'll have a better idea of when things are going to happen. And basically one of us is going to be in the project manager's back pocket the entire summer so that as soon as they find out an issue or what's going to happen, we'll be able to spin that out either through social media or the press release or some other means of getting that information out. Yes, yes. Uh, To get more information out to the businesses, are you still looking at block captains? Yes. Okay, if you'll explain. Uh, we will be recruiting an individual who we will provide an information packet to um, basically every two or three hundred feet. So you know, in the downtown, the blocks are smaller, but as you get further south, you know, we're going to block, we're going to chunk it up and we're going to let people know who the person is who could answer your questions. They'll have a little bit more information in terms of that kind of things. But that'll just be an additional point of contact to share with you all so that they can keep, help keep you informed. One of the things that was learned through the Consumers Energy Project, uh, as they were digging down, there's, there's stuff buried under the sidewalks and the street and the curbs that nobody really knows. We have some good ideas. There's drawings where the sewer lines, the water lines, the gas mains, all that are. Uh, but there's a lot of surprises out there. So uh, they're going to be dealing with those as they find them. And you know, those delays will be dealt with, I guess, best they can. For anybody that uh, has a home or a business that's been torn up by the consumer's energy, it's not restored yet, of course. But if you have any concerns with it right now, let's say they have a went across your driveway and it's sinking and getting really rad, uh, bad or rugged up, let us know. Um, we can have them come out at least put some gravel or stuff in there to help in the meantime until they get such time they come back in the spring and finish it with a, uh, whatever was there before. If it was blacktop or cement before and they cut it open, um, they'll come back and finish that, but not until spring when the weather breaks. But if you have an issue now where it's washing out or something and it's not pleasant to drive through or your customers, if you have a business to drive through, let us know, give us the address. Um, my email is right there, you can send it up to me. We'll get consumers to try to address those if we can, but eventually they will come back and replace or repair or restore those items, whether it's driveways or sidewalk yards. Some of the sidewalks may not get replaced because it doesn't make any sense to form the sidewalk only to tear it out two months later. So it may just stay the uh, crushed limestone or whatever is in place there. Um, any other questions? How are the uh, crosswalks working? Is it light? Is it light like uh, we have down in uh, is that kind of subway? They won't need the flashing rectangular beacons like they have at Subway on Burdick Street. Uh, pedestrian counts were high enough to warrant those signals at this time. What they're putting in is a gateway treatment system where they'll have a sign pedestrian crossing 100 feet in front of the crossing. It will be the yield to, to pedestrians in the, in the sidewalk. And there will be a refuge on it so you can cross two lanes and then wait and get across the other two lanes. Mm -hmm. um, so we're going to have so four 
pedestrian crossways between uh, the Burdick and, and Broadway, are you worried about traffic tie-ups? Uh, people could just be going across and it might be a nightmare trying to do that. That's one of the reasons why they didn't want to go with the lock system. And then we're going with the, we're, we're trying the new um, gateway treatment system for the crosswalks. Uh, they're estimated, well, frankly, when they go out and do their pedestrian counts now, there's not many people out there because it's loud, it's noisy, it's dusty, and it's dangerous. Uh, our goal is to slow it down and make it more pleasant to be out there. And then we'll do another set of pedestrian counts to see what they will need to do to change the signalization at those pedestrian crossings. I don't think they'll ever go to a lock system because of the truck route. And then, so. I was This thing in now is already backed up now. We go north at night mm -hmm. and we get people crossing four different crossways at four different times, but soon enough for one another, traffic's never moved through it. Well, the, this, the crossing at Burdick is going to be signalized just like it is now. So it's going to be pretty much um, The other ones are, are probably not going to have the same pedestrian crossings that Burdick does. And so the, the concept being is most people will wait for a break in traffic and won't step out because they're pretty risk averse. So. I don't expect to see significant traffic delays from those in any nature. I think it was, wasn't it just a few weeks before Christmas that someone got struck by a car after dark uh, across the 24th Street and Cap, somewhere in that mid block area um, going across? I, I don't think that they were seriously hurt, but they were hurt. I think B1 is there in the two real close together where you guys are putting them. Yeah. Two seems to be kind of silly. <coughs> Well, there's a lot of parking on that southeast area that they come out but by the theater or something like that, you can't cross there. Mm -hmm. So having one that back of the woods makes sense. But yeah, the other one... <coughs> one from the Oxy, one from the theaters. Yeah, yeah, I think one would be good there, so too. Yeah. And people might find it too difficult to use themselves and just walk down to the corner because it's more normal to see one in the corner. Maybe that would be the choice they use, I guess. Um, one thing that will be a change as you're heading uh, down my Broadway right now, there is no left turn. There will be left turn lane and, I don't know about air, there would be allowed. I can't recall. There will be signalized. Signalized left turn. Left turn. Oh, okay. As you're heading east on the Broadway. Right now it's not allowed yet because of the bank. <laughs> but that will be a change. So as we learn more, we will try to get the information out. Um, please uh, go to the, that website, Patrol24, and put your email in if you'd like to be notified via emails. Um, obviously, there's a Facebook presence that DBA has and stuff too. Some people don't like that constant notification, but if they want to be able to check their email every couple of days or once a week to see what's coming, the only way we'll have it is if you go in there and sign up and give it to us. And that's all we're going to use it for. Hopefully that'll help. The, uh, Entrances going into the uh, Aqua Lake subdivision from the south will be, there will be barricades up there talking about no through traffic. Uh, there will be barricades up in the north end coming out Lake Road into the subdivision, no through traffic. Across the street over to Oxford Township was at Willow Lake or something like that. There will be the same thing there. Um, no through traffic, no construction through traffic. The police are fully aware of all the cut throughs that is going to be happening. Um, and traffic and people cutting through and stuff like that, they'll do their best to, at least if they're going that way, to try to keep them not going too fast. But again, there's only a few officers out there and it's a lot of space to cover and certain times of the day they're, they're quite busy. Going down Pontiac Street when they're first doing the uh, one intersection here, the detour, uh, there's concerns are already at the school street. Um, so the police are going to have to make a pretty good presence down there. There will be a left turn arrow put in at Burdick and Glassby for the north and southbound. Mainly concern was with the buses coming out in the afternoon trying to turn left to get out to the middle schools, the elementary schools. Um, with all of that traffic being pushed up north of Glassby, uh, we reached out to uh, MDOT and Road Commission to get a left turn arrow there. Um, we'll try to see if we can get it to stay there. But the initial price was 80 grand for us to have one put in there prior to the project, but now they're putting one in there. 
I thought it was just going to be a temporary room. I don't know if you see sometimes when they're doing a road project, but it's actually a signal to be changed and where it is and hanging at the intersection, kind of like the normal one. So we'll try to get that to stay if we can. Mm -hmm. That's going to be a little trial and error, too. They'll set it for a certain time. How many seconds do they want to take away from the north and southbound traffic to provide those left turn uh, vehicles? They'll keep an eye on it for the first couple of weeks. If it has to be adjusted, they'll adjust it. There's a couple, uh, at least one radar trailer that MDOT's going to have a place around town here and there. We have complaints of speeding areas. But they'll try to move it around to an area so people can see when, when and where they're speeding. Hopefully we'll all get through it. We'll end up having that beautiful downtown to on the map and find that it's worth it. That's the goal. Anybody else? Well, we're going to do another one here next month. Um, yeah. No, that, oh, that's right. That's too close to that. We're doing the yellow line right now. The march is the uh, school one. Then. Once that is nailed down, of course, then that will be on our website. Oh, yeah. This Thursday morning is in Chamber of Commerce, 830. Um, State of the Community. We'll be doing basically the same thing up there, explaining some information. Thank you all for coming. Thank you for coming.